Now that we have described what partial integration is a little bit, we can begin to actually define what a double integral is. So just to draw an analogy with the single integral, we know that if we have some curve or some function f of x, and then we define some interval from a to b, and then the integral basically from a to b is just going to be the area underneath that curve, so we write it as f of x dx, a, B, because essentially uh, an integral is just a sum of little contributions, so those contributions are just going to be little strips that add up to that area as the number of strips goes to infinity and as the width keeps decreasing. So <clears throat> the same kind of concept is going to be applied for defining a double integral. So what we're going to do is we're going to start defining some surface, and because in one dimension we have some interval A, B, but in, in two dimensions we need to define limits along the x and y directions because remember that set is going to be a function of x and y so now we need to have boundaries in both x and y in order to define that region of integration and that region of integration is usually called d for two dimensions so what do you think that the that the double integral of that is going to represent well it should represent if this is the area underneath the curve this should be the volume underneath that surface so that would be the volume underneath that surface within that region D. And the way we can define this using Riemann sums is, let's say that we take a little rectangle, and then it's going to be like this. So the height is just going to be given by the, the value of the function at that point. So we're going to take a little rectangle slice, and that rectangle slice is going to have a base that is going to be defined by two quantities. So the first one is going to be by the change in y, and then the second one is going to be by the change in x, so we're going to have those two. So basically the way we can define this, and then the height is just going to be f of x, y itself. So how can we define the volume of that very, very small rectangular um, cutout? Well, that's just going to be the value of x and y, so at that point, times the little area element, which is going to be the same as f of x, j, y, j. So this is going to be the volume at that point times delta x, delta y. So that's basically what we're going to have. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add up all those little rectangles that can be fit underneath that surface within that region D. So in the end, the volume is going to be given by a double sum, because remember, we need to sum up for ev every combination of those two indices. So we're going to have sum, let's say, from m equals to 1 to big M, and then n equals to 1 to big N. And then we're going to have the, the value of the function x of m y of n times delta x delta y. So basically what this means is that for each of these combinations we're going to take um, the point on the surface within that region D and then we're going to multiply it by, by these widths which are going to be fixed because we want them to be uniform. We want to have uniform rectangles spersed uh, all along that region D. And then if we take the limit as this goes to as these two quantities go into infinity, then what we're going to end up getting because we know delta x is going to be given by uh, the two values, so that's going to be x2 minus x1. So let, let's say those are two boundaries x2 minus x1 over the total number of strips in x, so that's going to be m, and then delta y is just going to be y2 minus y1 n. So that's going to be our definition. So now if we take the limit as this double sum, which is called double Riemann sum, goes as these two quantities go to infinity, then we get a double integral. So the double integral is going to be defined as dx dy is equal to the limit as m goes to infinity, n goes to infinity of the double sum Should be a little n of the function m y m 
yn, sorry, delta x, delta y. And the reason I'm defining the double integral as the double Riemann sum is because this is going to be very useful for approximating the, the value of this. Because remember, this is going to be a, a fairly complicated calculation. Now we have double integrals and we have a function of two variables. But this can be easily used, easily implemented in Excel or some other numerical computation package to actually solve for an approximate value of the integral. So as you may imagine, th there's little point in having something as an indefinite double integral because remember when we integrate a function of two variables with respect to one of them, we get a constant value which is actually going to be a function of the other variable. And then when we integrate that other new function with respect to the other variable, we're going to get another function that is a function of the other variable. So in the end, we're going to get a function that is totally incomplete and we won't be able to do anything with it. So double integrals and triple integrals and whatever you want to, um, whatever number of integrals you want to perform are usually more useful when they're in definite form. So usually we define them within a region D and obviously we need to set up boundaries so that we define that region of integration there. So I'm going to show you just an example, a simple example of how this works and we're going to spend quite some time just working through different examples and exploring different properties of double integrals. So let's have a region of integration defined on the xy plane that is a square, so it has width 1 along both axes, so this is a region of integration D. So the first thing we need to do, and let's say we want to evaluate the double integral of the following function, which is a paraboloid, x squared plus y squared. So basically that would look like this. And we have talked about this little shape in, in the past. So if we're taking this little region of integration here, then basically what we're going to be finding by doing by performing the double integral on that region is the little volume uh, confined to that region underneath that surface. So the first thing we need to do is obviously set up limits. So the limits in this case are going to be constant. So y is going to go from 0 to 1. And x is going to go from 0 to 1 as well. And now in order to set up our double integral, we're going to write double integral 0 to 1, 0 to 1 of x squared plus y squared dx dy is going to be equal to, we're going to integrate the first, so we're going to integrate the inner integral first, so that's going to be with respect to x, and then we're going to use that result to evaluate the second integral, so that's going to be this with respect to x, that's x cubed over 3 plus y squared times x from 0 to 1 and then whatever we get from here we're going to integrate with respect to y next so that's going to be 0 1 now if we put 1 in here that's going to give us 1 over 3 plus y squared with respect to y so now we're going to integrate with respect to y so that's going to be y over 3 plus y cubed over 3 from 0 to 1 and then this is going to give us 2 over 3. So the volume underneath that particular surface within this region is going to be 2 over 3 units cubed, whatever units we choose. So that's going to be a volume. So hopefully this has shown you some of the properties of double integrals and obviously this is the simplest example of a region because remember the region is going to be what we define here. It could be something like this. And this is something that we will do in, in the next few videos. So we could easily have a region that is defined by y as a function of x and then x is the independent variable so it would just go from 0 to some point x0. And then what would we do in that case if we had that region? Well, this is something that we'll explore in the next video, but essentially the limits of integration are going to be um, the function is going to go from 0 to f of x, and then x is the independent variable, so we just go from 0 to x naught. So in that case, we would actually need to put the, make sure that we're integrating with respect to y first, so that the constant limits are actually on the outer integral. And the reason for that is that we want to get a numerical value out of this. So if we integrate with respect to x first and then y, 
what's going to happen is that in the end we're going to get an expression for x instead of a numerical value so what we're going to do is we're going to learn some techniques that allows us to essentially exchange the order of integration and just to show you something one of the interesting properties about double integrals is that if you have constant limits as we just had in this example if your limits are constant so let's say you have x1 x2 y1 and y2 and, and all of those are constants then you can change the order of integration so y1 y2 and then you would get exactly the same result so long as all of these limits are constant if one of them is a function of the other variable then you cannot do this you have to use a transformation or you have to use some redefinition of the limits and that's something that we will explore in the next video